Hi, welcome back to the Inspire View series. I'm Sharice Boucher of shariceboucher.com and I'm a momentum strategy coach for life and business and an energy healer. I'm really excited to be in my second year of this series because all the inspiring women that I have talked to so far have inspired me. So it's a bit of a selfish journey, I think, but I love it. So, and I hope that they inspire you as well because um, sharing stories, I think is, well, people connect that way. I mean, I've been connecting that way for thousands of years, right? So sharing stories and knowing um, how people have gotten from one point of their life to another is, is inspiring and motivational. So that's why I continue to do this. And today, I'm really excited to introduce you to my new friend that we, we chat and chat, <laughs> chat, chat, all the time. <laughs> uh, her name is Annika Frey, and she is a birth guide and intuitive happiness coach, and you'll see why the happiness goes right along with that. Uh, she lives with her husband and her two little boys in the magical southwest of Ireland. Her days are filled with love and laughter, making time instead of chasing it, long walks in nature, and good wholesome food. She believes in learning, growing, and changing every day and loves to bring presence, happiness, and confidence into the lives of the people she works with. And uh, yeah, you'll see exactly. Because actually I commented on that once in a post on Facebook that she's always so smiley that you have to smile when you see her. So... <laughs> Hello, lovely lady. I am so Hi. happy you're here to share your awesomeness with everybody. Yeah, you make me blush. Like, <laughs> this is part of me. I'm always, I'm always smiling. That, that's true. But I'm also like, I'm, I'm, I blush very easily. So you will see that a couple of times probably in this interview. <laughs> so it'll be nice and naturally pink. So that's yeah. okay. <laughs> I don't need any blusher or any rouge. That <laughs> no, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm really like excited to be here. And yes. So, um, because, you know, stories connect people. Tell us a little bit about how you even got to doing the type of coaching and work that you do. Because you do have a couple different facets of what you do around um, around your work so if you could just share your little journey because actually you have like a few different things that you do but <laughs> <laughs> from chocolate to happiness I oh, mean. Yes. yeah uh, yeah some would say it's the same thing yeah. uh, chocolate and happiness but <laughs> it's um yeah i am um, i think i started with our move to Ireland. so i um i met my husband very young I was 20 years of age when we got married and um, then we both got unemployed in 2010 and then moved over to Ireland and we got both sucked into the corporate world and like he lasted longer than I did. Uh, it wasn't for me. <laughs> I wanted more. Um, I didn't want to spend eight hours a day in a job that wouldn't satisfy me, you know, so I um, would go inside and also searching outside and all that kind of stuff and eventually I was pregnant with our first child so then I made the cut and um, being pregnant with him made me realize that I need boundaries in place that I need to set better boundaries and so one of those boundaries was that I left my job my corporate job and um, started sewing dresses and costumes but I wasn't really clear on what I wanted to do it was just more a thing of like this is easy for me and the main thing was looking after him um but then my husband got kind of burned out he couldn't do the job anymore and i was like you know why don't you stay home i stayed home for a year now with our little one why don't you stay home and i have a lot of what uh, like in maybe i go back to an office you know i just go and do some interviews whatever um, but then the, the universe or life or whatever you want to call it, you know, I had other plans and um, they sent me an opportunity in form of our chocolate people on the market. They said they want to move away. And um, so I asked them if they could teach me and they did. 
And then all of a sudden, like two months later, I had my own market stall and uh, was providing us with, yeah, with food and, and the rent and everything. So it picked up right from the start. And for the last three years, I have been making chocolates and cake pops and uh, that kind of stuff. We had another little boy uh, in that time, so last year. And um, we, um, and my husband took over then the market store when I was pregnant because I got really sick. And 2015 was kind of um, a very hard year. It was financially, it wasn't easy. Uh, every time you, you start something new, it, right. you know, can be rocky, definitely. And um, then also, the I was very sick, so my health wasn't good. I was very isolated because we live rural. It's like about an hour from from the next bigger town and from our friends that we made over the last couple of years. Mm. And so when when 2015 ended i sat there and i said like i need to change i need to change a couple of things to be happier again a year ago i was so happy and now it feels like 2015 the only good thing i managed to do is birthing my child in the way i wanted to mm -hmm. and that was where i started i i i looked at that beautiful experience and said like how did I manage to make that happen how can I bring that joy that empowerment that being in in your in your truth in your power in your essence and in your instincts as well in your body in your intuition how can I bring that to other women mm. so what worked for me was that I read a lot of um, positive birth stories just to get into the right mindset. I think you and I, we both know like 80% of any situation are mindset. It's not about the, the surroundings so much. It's actually about the, what is going inside. Right. And what is going on inside of you? What is going on in your mind, in your head? What do you make out of it? And um, so I started sharing, like I, I um, made a blog. I put a blog online and shared my stories. And then I searched for new stories. And since February, every Sunday, I publish a new um, positive birth story. And then on Thursdays, I look at the tools that help creating them. And while I was doing this, I actually thought like, okay, what helped me? Can I make a program out of it? And um, I came up with an online program. It's all accessible online. And uh, the, the woman, the pregnant woman can log in and go through the modules. And it's about affirmations, meditations, body and breath work, and then a visualization technique that I created. It's the happy place method. And that's why it's called happy place birthing. And then when I was finished with this, I was like, well, why only make my tools available to pregnant women? Like, I, I think I handle motherhood quite well, you know, and I have all those amazing tools I gathered over the last 15 years. So why, why not, like, teach? Why not hand them on, not only to mothers, but to women in all stages of their life? As soon as they realize that there's more to life than just go to their job, come home, eat something, watch some telly repeat you know <laughs> live live from weekend to weekend or live from holiday to holiday it's mm -hmm. like there's more to life than that and i did that stuff i create our life every every day i create our life new or our lives new and and um, it's ever changing and going through those transformations it's very very important that you have your tools you have your tools ready because change for the better or the worse, it's always scary for us humans. Yeah. We're always scared of change because that means um, insecurity. That means uncertainty. That means, yes. Yeah. So transformations, no matter in which area of your life, are always scary. And it's okay that they're scary. But if you have the tools to handle them, it can actually, it's not only enjoyable to get to wh wherever you want to go, 
but you can enjoy that process going to that mm. part, to to that new destination. You know, it's very similar to what we say about happiness. I I love this. You know, yeah. happiness is is not a destination. It is a way of life. And the same goes for transformation. The moment you move, the moment you get into movement, you won't stop. And if you stop, then you're stuck, you know, and you feel crappy. And at some point, the universe will give you a push. <laughs> you have to move again. Yeah. So better keep moving. Don't <laughs> let the universe push you because that comes normally at moments in your life where you're not really ready for it. <laughs> exactly it does and i think anybody can look back on times in their life where something happened to force them to you know take a redirection or a look if at what they were doing that they would say okay you know like i'd been feeling tired or i'd been feeling not on purpose or right? I've been feeling a certain way before this happened, you know, and, and inevitably the universe does kind of, phew, if you yes. don't pay attention. <laughs> yeah. If, if you don't pay attention, if you don't keep moving, if you guess like the universe at some point will do this to you and then you have to move then you have to move again. So I, um, I created a group coaching program. The first round is over already. We're starting the second round now at the beginning of July um, called Elemental Transformation, um, where I use the elements because I'm deeply connected to nature. I, I love nature. It's like this here, island, the nature is so beautiful. So yeah. beautiful. When it's not and raining. I, I yeah, when it's raining. Yeah, but even when it's raining, yeah. but even when it's raining, it's just gorgeous, you know? Yeah. And I, um, I love to be so close to, to the sea mm -hmm. and so close to the mountains as well and, and just have that variation all around me. And I can pick every single day with, with which element I want to connect. Mm. So in the elemental transformation, we go through a series of actions that will help you keep moving. Um, and they're, they're um, connected uh, with the elements. So water. Uh, fire, air, and earth. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's a lovely program. And we go through the series and I teach tools that are connected to the elements as well. We do meditations and movement and there are a couple of breath breathing techniques as well. It's, uh, yeah, it's mindset work mixed with practical tools because that's what I do. I'm, I'm not all woo-woo. I'm not all, it's like, <laughs> Uh, but I'm not all coach. It's more like a mixture of the two of them. Right. Whenever I, I am with a client, I just, I see what they need. I take their hand and, and take them from where they are. And then we see where it goes. So, yeah. And, and that's what I'm doing at the moment. After, after I finished uh, the birthing program, I started the Happy Place Living and the, the group coaching and now one-to-one -one coaching comes into place as well. And I just enjoy it so much. Like over the last 10 years, I have coached numerous friends and colleagues and family and whatever. And, and now I actually get to do that for a living. <laughs> that is just amazing because it doesn't feel like work. Right. Yes, it's work, you know, like having your schedule and working around all our other things. Like you still have the market so we're trying we're trying to find a seller, uh, a buyer, so we're trying to, to sell it because I stopped eating processed sugar in December. That was another hint from the universe that probably a chocolate stall is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and also, there is um, a bigger reason for me behind like changing from a very location-based business to a location-independent business because last October, I had that deep 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 calling from from within that i need to go back to the philippines mm -hmm. um we in 2011 we were on the philippines and um, we walked up we, we hiked up to a little waterfall and for the first time in my adult life i was present i didn't i had no shadows from the past like telling me you know like 
weird things that are, are like pulling me down and I had no worries what would come next. I didn't think about what I need to pack for the next day or whatever. <laughs> I was just present in that moment. And I call this, this uh, waterfall my happy place. And I used it. I was there when I birthed my se- first and I was there when I birthed my second in my mind. You know? I went there to relax and recharge and then I was ready for whatever would, like for the next contraction basically mm-hmm. while I was giving birth. And so um, I have been chasing this feeling of being present in the moment and I, I tried so many tools to let go of the past and make the fears of the future manageable and really stay in this moment right here Mm -hmm. because this moment is the only moment you can actually influence that you have control over. You can't control anything that has happened and you can't control anything that will happen in front of you. There are unlimited possibilities, right? Unlimited possibilities, you know? So why not concentrate on right now? And make it the best moment that it can be. So yeah, that that and that is what I'm teaching as well in the one-to-one coaching. You know how to yeah. get more present, more focused. Self-care is a big, big Self-care issue is a around huge this. Thing. Yeah, that's huge. Yes. Huge. Yeah, when especially I'm for women, I think. Especially um, for women. Yeah, men are better. Like they're they're better at taking care. They just like they they can just plug out and let the dishes and whatever it be, you know. <laughs> I'm like, I can't sleep if I haven't done this or this. Yeah. 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 But like, yeah, we, we are more like running over our to-do list and what else we should do. Should is like the awful word. <laughs> we talk like about other it. people first. We always put other people before us, our children or spouses, partners, anybody really, you know. <laughs> The fact is that you can look after others much, much better if you are looked after, if you're feeling well, if you're happy. Yeah. Like you can make others happy if you love yourself and give yourself the care that you need and don't rely on others to give it to you. Right. Give it to yourself. Then you, you can actually give more love. You can be kinder, more patient, more supportive. You have more energy. You feel yeah. better. You feel rested. You know, it's and it comes down to very basic things. Me as a mother of two, like they're one in three. You know, for me, self care means a warm, warm tea, drinking my tea warm, not letting it go down, taking <laughs> <laughs> a power nap, twenty minutes, yeah. fifteen minutes of yoga, doing what a uh, non negotiable for me is doing my meditation daily, mm-hmm. every single morning. We have a morning routine when the boys wake up, their father takes them down and have, has breakfast with them. And I wake up, brush my teeth, dress myself, and then go back into bed and do my meditation. And then I come down and I'm ready for the day and I'm ready for them because I know I'm centered, you know, I'm yeah. clear, I'm balanced. Yes. <laughs> it's so important and so often overlooked and Um, A lot of my guests, including myself, talk about the self-care factor because I think so many people think it has to be this big, luxurious thing, you know, and my biggest thing that I've shared a lot about self-care is reading. Um, Mm -hmm. I just like to read. So that's something I do like every evening if I don't do it a couple times a day. I mean, like reading a book, not just like reading posts on Facebook. That doesn't count. (laughs) No, actually sitting down. Articles that I've, you know, opened tabs for, something like that. Not that. Totally disconnected and a physical book. And there's nothing else I'm paying attention to except that moment of reading and getting into that zone. And that is huge. And going, just going outside for a few minutes and, and being present out there and just really paying attention to your surroundings and the birds and the wind and how things feel like just that in moment. with all your senses right exactly. hear and feel and taste and see and smell and like just yep. being in that moment 
Yes. That's, it's like and pushing a reset button, you know, yes. if you take time to do that in your day and you can tell when you're ready for that, I think, you know, like you're starting to get irritated with stuff or things, things, maybe technology isn't really cooperating with you. That's like, take a time out for yourself yeah. and go just, it could be for three minutes, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be a whole day or weekend at the spa and doing, you know, all this, although how lovely that would be, but it doesn't have to be all that. Who has time for that daily? No one. Right. Let's be honest. No one, you know, but like for, I have my happy list. And I, that, that is one of the first things I let my clients do. Do a happy list. Do, like, write down little things that make you happy. I'm a shower girl. I'm not the, like, bubble bath kind of girl. I'm a shower girl. Yeah. So when I sit in front of my computer and I feel like, oh, I can't do this right now, you know, it's not working. And it would take me two hours minimum, you know. And I... I have the awareness to see that. And like we talked about awareness before, you yeah. need being aware of that and then saying like, okay, I need a timeout. And I go down my happy list and they're like, oh no, I had a tea earlier. I don't want to do yoga. I'm exhausted already. I go and take a shower. And then I take a shower that might take me between 10 and 20 minutes. I'm back at my computer in the shower. I have awesome ideas how to solve a problem. I was just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in front of. And then I, I do the work that would have taken me at least two hours in one hour. Yeah. So it's one hour 20 later. I have 40 minutes left to do something else. Yeah. So despite the fact that you are taking time for yourself, is actually you're making more time. You're making more time by taking time for yourself. Yeah, I love that. Yes. I love that. That is so true. <laughs> that is so true because we often get in that mindset of just go, 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 go. And it, it's frazzling. You know, you just get ah, like your, your energy is constricted and then things aren't working out right. And then that makes you frustrated. And then you think you have to go, go, go more. But if you just take the time out, like you said, you've actually gained more time because you're refocused, you're clear, ideas come to you and everything happens so much. That's it. Get back into your body. You know, trust your body. Like for, for I, I like to use the word her when I talk in, in these, you know, in front of women. Yeah. Because like we all have our female body and she's here to work with you. She's here to guide you, to show you what is your truth, your desire, your passion or your needs. And if you get still for a moment and just tune into that body that you're given, this amazing machine, and this amazing miracle you have, and trust what that body is telling you. For example, I need food, good food, wholesome food, or I need sleep, or I need movement. And your body tells you her needs. Mm -hmm. And your body tells you as well if a decision is the right or the wrong decision. And it's a lot about like following your heart's desire means that you need to find out what is my heart's desire. Right. And you can't find that out without getting really still. Getting really still, asking yourself, is this the right thing? And then listening to your body. Mm -hmm. And when you feel like deep, deep, breath, you know, into your belly, into your chest, fill yourself with that beautiful air around you, feel inside you, you can put your hands on your heart, and then do a statement, like say it out loud, or, or just think it, and then you will feel, when your body closes, when your shoulders draw to the front and up, you know, and your jaw gets tight, and kind of like, you know, and you, you get a nod in your stomach, and all those little signs, like everybody is a little bit different with the signs but you will feel there is a, a moment of closing and then you know no this is not right for me right, right? it's not true for me you know this statement is not true well 
when you feel the butterflies in your stomach and your heart space opens, your shoulders drop down, everything releases, you get a smile on your face, just thinking about this decision that you, you say like, oh, yes, mm-hmm. yeah, this is what I need. This is what I want. This is what I need to do now. And it's so many women are trained from the very start to override them, to not trust it, to go with whatever their mind tells them them that is right, you know, or they were trained that this is what women do. (laughs) Right. Or they, what does that mean? What does that mean? There shouldn't be a difference between men and women. Like, you know, it's just like, Learn how to trust your intuition and the signs that your body gives you. And you learn how to take care of yourself. You learn how to make decisions without regretting them afterwards. You learn how to follow your heart's desire. It's all connected. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it all comes down. And like we, we had that before to awareness. Yes. To not being ruled by the unconscious thoughts and the patterns and the... Ah, negative self-talk and the, yeah. all the, the projections you have on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so many people, and I, I know we're all guilty of this, I'm sure, because we all didn't get to where we are now. Just, well, it would be nice if we were born that way, but um, it was not. <laughs> you know, So it's been a journey over the past you know, few years, really. But um, when you're living in a state of external everything, um, be more reactive, um, then it's much more difficult to make decisions that are best for you, I guess, because, so I love what you're saying. And you say it so calmly. I feel like it's just, you know, like a beautiful little journey which it is, but when we're in that state of external all the time, and like I see a lot of people do this where they're always asking others for input um, on a decision that they want to make. And it's, and then I feel that at times they might just keep asking for that input until they try to get the odds in their favor for whatever they already know that they want to do. So skip the middleman or the 20 middlemen that you ask you know, and take those moments, like you said, to, to check in with yourself and, and see how it feels about a decision that you're making. I mean, certainly if, if you need to check with a partner or something, cause it's a, a financial it's thing or it's whatever. About a financial <laughs> thing, of course. Yes. Well, you have to know first if you really, really want it. Yeah. Because if you really, really want it, there is normally a way to make it happen. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yes. And the other thing is that the external, it's more, you need to move from reacting so much to acting, mm-hmm. to creating that reality that you are actually want to live. Mm-hmm. And that is incremental changes. You, yeah. you won't go from here to there and like, Right. You wake up tomorrow and it's done, you know. Right. But the story that 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 certainty, that faith that I have, and all the things that I learned, they came a long way. Like fifteen years ago, mm-hmm. fifteen years ago, I yeah. was a, like not even not even fifteen years ago. I was a sixteen-year-old moving out. That was my first act of self-love. I moved out from home. Because it was a toxic environment. Yes. Really and I still went to school until 19. So I worked and I had school and I was very like, there, there wasn't much time in between the working and the school. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then I had a traumatic experience. I, I was raped mm. and I told nobody. I put it into a box, into my mind and closed that, that box and Never touched it until last year. So that was put away for 10 years because I couldn't deal with it. So nobody knew what was wrong with me, but I had a big, big mess of trauma. Mm -hmm. And I remember that moment 10 years ago where I was sitting across from from my doctor between my parents 
who who were both totally overwhelmed with the situation because they didn't know what was wrong and i had ever changing like oh she has depression now oh, she no she has a psychosis or oh, she has this she has that you know because they couldn't figure out what, what was wrong with me and i was sitting there and he would tell my parents in front of me without like addressing me because he thought like <laughs> important kind of you know he would tell them i would never be able to live on my own I would always have to have somebody around me to take care of me. I beg to differ. That sounds like such an archaic mentality yes. to have. I mean, I could see maybe in, in the 40s or 50s, but for no. that to happen like now, that's... That was wow. 10 years ago. Wow. And I saw my mother's face drop and she walked out of my life then. And uh, we had... We had sporadic contact, but it wasn't great anymore. And then when I was pregnant with my first, I just like stopped it completely. Mm. My father, who wasn't part of the toxic environment where I moved out um, when I was younger, it, he just lived somewhere else with his wife and his, you know, they had their own little family and their own problems. He actually took care of me. He was there and he supported me and got me slowly, slowly, I got better, you know, slowly, slowly time dealt with the wounds that I had and yeah. so like you said like this is nothing that happened overnight this right. is nothing when you are completely driven by external factors and you're in a victim mentality it takes it takes time to get out there definitely and yeah. it takes little changes until you are in a place where you are actually you are the creator of your life not somebody else around you. So right. yeah, and that's the story behind this. It is just like, no matter how far deep down you are, there is a way to climb up, you know? Yeah. I don't take any medication. My husband broke his toe like three months ago, two months ago, two months ago. So it was on me to have the, the birthing, the living, the, the market stall and the two smallies because he was on <laughs> crutches and couldn't lift them, you know? Yeah. And then I thought back and thought like, you know, 10 years ago, I was told I couldn't live on my own. Now I have the responsibilities for three businesses and two children and a broken husband. <laughs> no, a husband with broken toes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I'm actually here. And yeah. I'm free. And like just accessing my power, my strength in this moment of giving birth. And then afterwards, chasing it and getting really clear on like, I'm a leader, a creator. I am powerful. I'm magical. I'm strong. Yeah. And this is what I believe about myself. And I love this amazing body that I have. And I can actually say a year ago, I wouldn't have talked about self-love like I did, do now. You know? But I made such a massive shift and such a massive journey in the last year. I love myself and I wish every woman out or every woman out there could say the same about her because then we would be all much, much happier right. and we, we would take our life in our own hands and we yeah. would make the best out of every moment, you know? So yeah, I, I don't know how we got here, but <laughs> that's really dear to my heart. Yeah. It's like, in, uh, behind all this crap, behind all those layers that you have put on over time and that people pushed on you, your parents, your teachers, your, your roommates, your whatever it is, right. you know? Underneath those layers, there's a light, there's an essence, there's a power within you. And as soon as you find and connect and plug back in with that power, you are unstoppable. You can create your own life and you can, you can make sure that you have the best day ever, every single day. That's awesome. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> it does. You just have to kind of sh shrug off the external stuff because if you let that affect you, it's going to take you down a different path. Um, and it's, it's not easy because it's not a, uh, 
quote unquote normal practice to just be present and try to focus on it at least at least at some point during the day right like a little moment of mindful presence um it's something that you have to focus on and work at because it's not natural for us to do that because we're so used to having all these external things bombarding us all the time and our our monkey brains that like <laughs> like little hamsters on a wheel in there that just <laughs> keep running off lists and things of to do's and everything else so i absolutely love how you talk about that and how it it um the importance of it and the transformation that you've made is incredible because i'm sure anybody who knows you looking at you now from from this point in time that you were referring to like two completely different people two completely different people and between there and now i also like bounced up for about i would say 30 kilograms 40 kilograms something like that so i i had a really bad eating period in between as well and like with the with the medi medication i had then in the clinic and all of that so yes yeah looking at me now i feel the best i've ever been I feel so happy, so healthy, so balanced. But that is hard work. It isn't like, you know, it is like, this happened. Right. Yeah, you <laughs> can't just say you're going to do it and, and there it is. I it mean, was a lot of you can't, but it's action that has to keep that, tr that yes. going in that direction. Yeah. And that is what, what I talk in, in, in the group program, but also with my one on one clients. It's like the water, you know, you need to clear all that junk that is mm. on you you need to clear that out first and then with the fire you need to find your passion what are you passionate about where is your fire where is your essence where is your power and then with the air we paint a vision we, we lift ourselves up into the air and look further and look where can i go to be at a happier place and then with the earth we put a foundation underneath we put practical steps what can i do how do I move forward for the next couple of weeks or my next couple of months? How can I not freak out <laughs> right. when good things happen or when actually parts of that vision come true? And how can I readjust when that vision changes as well? And that is like clearing out the junk at the start. It sounds so easy, but it isn't. Right, right. You have to look at your shadows, at your, yeah, your years you know, of stuff. Yes. Yeah. And, and when, when that trauma that I had, when the rape came bubbling up, I had to work through that. Mm -hmm. And I tried with all my tools that I had to work through that. And I did great work, but I actually needed external help then. Mm -hmm. So I went to, to my hypnotherapist and she went through that with me. And then I went to a healer who did a lot of energy, like a session of energy work with me to, to release that side of it. And then actually I was free to move on, you know? And that sounds all so simple and like, <laughs> but this was a process yeah. over time. And it still is. But like, because I worked through it, I can talk about it now to you. Mm -hmm. If right. I wouldn't have worked through it, I couldn't really talk about it. So there's, that's a big point. Like when you're able to, to, to talk about what happened to you or what, what experience you made without getting all like oh yeah and it was so awful and getting back into victim mode but actually mm -hmm. saying like okay i had this experience and these are the lessons that i that i got in there for me now looking back that rape 10 years ago it was a massive kick from the universe that i'm moving into the wrong direction mm -hmm. you know I was that like I, I took loads of drugs, I was drinking too much, I like and that all stopped after that trauma. Mm -hmm. That all stopped after that trauma. So it wasn't a pleasant experience. Mm, yeah. But it probably was the only thing that would have kicked me out there. You know, something extreme. And that's what I mean when the universe has its own way <laughs> to kick yeah. us into the right direction. Yeah. To Not get us pleasant experiences. Yeah. 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 
So that that is the story behind my wise words about better keep moving yeah. instead of being. It. <laughs> because you know that really connects a lot of dots for a lot of people who have bad experiences, and and we've all experienced things. Nobody lives, you know, this little sheltered life where nothing happens affects you at all. Um, so I I really love how you're sharing how you got to this place where I see you with a smile on like every time I see you on a, a video or anything and in, in groups that were in this. so that it wasn't there it wasn't always there you, you had a lot of work to do and kept taking action to become the woman that you are today that can now share that experience with other people do you only work with women or do you work with men too I so far, I only work with women because I feel it, um, a deeper connection with them and I can understand them better. Right. Um, I'm not too bad in coaching men, but then they have a very kind of different structure. And I'm good with teaching to get in touch with your feminine side and with, with your you know, divine guidance or intuition or how you want to call it. And men don't don't have so much the issues with those kind of things that I teach. So it's mainly women. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I would say I haven't had the pleasure to coach a man yet officially at least. Yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of coaching with my husband. Yeah. Oh, maybe we are the, the best mindset coaches for each other, which is great. If That's you great. have somebody at your side, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very grateful he's still here after, you know, now nine, nine years almost. So yes. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and, and he's a fantastic dad as well. Yeah. Just, just saying. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I um I mostly coach women or I, I, I aim to coach women because I have that feeling that there is a deep connection between all of us all over the world. Like women all over the world mm -hmm. go through the same kind of things. Yeah. You know? I agree. Yes. And so that way. Like we all do. everyone that I've talked to in this manner you know we share the same things everybody shares the same things it doesn't matter if you're in costa rica or scotland or ireland or here in the states or wherever you are it's all the same it's all the same at least in our western culture it is all the same like in our western culture women are are taught to be a lovely version of a man but we're not we're women <laughs> And then, like, finding that balance again between your male and your female energy. Right. Like, the, the male energy being, like, very, like, let's do this. Let's get shit done, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and while the that's, female... that's my energy that I, like, try to, to get going there. But, <laughs> yeah. So the male energy is the do energy, while the female energy yeah. is more of a being, of a being state. And that is where your happy list comes into play. It's like, how can you be just for the next 15 minutes? Yeah. And then yeah. you can go back to do. Yeah. I love that. It's a good balance. <laughs> yes. It's a good balance to create. And I encourage people all the time, create balance. Um, you have to, you have to manage your energy. You have to manage and your energy is like everything. It's like every part of you. So your thoughts, your your physical energy, everything. Oh, it's so, so, so important. The you, know, you, can't, you can't do if you're not being. Yeah, exactly. It needs, weird. You can't do, but you know. Yeah. yeah. It needs that, 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 yes. Yeah, that balance between the two of them. Yeah. And man, they, um, yeah, they have issues to go into their female energy sometimes. But I, I wouldn't necessarily know how to help them. Yeah. You know, they have a very different thinking from our, like, yes. Yeah, and they have a hard time also getting their emotions out or talking about their emotions. So they need to trust somebody very, very deeply before that comes out. And I had that a couple of times. Yes, I'm normally the, the person on the party where like, I just sit there and wait for my husband to get a drink. And then when he comes back, I can tell him like two new life stories. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, who I am. This is the, the energy I radiate. And so, yes. 
but um, they normally don't have that, that <sighs> all this from the outside that they need, they need to be a certain way. Well, we're women, we're, we have a very fixed thing, like you have to do this, you have to be the, the mother, the virgin, uh, the mother, and it's like, I actually want to be all of these and none of these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's loads behind that. Yeah, there, there is. Very different. Um, well, that's why the book came out, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Because <laughs> it's a different, it just, we just work differently. We work differently. We, we do. And there is, our physical bodies are different as well, you know? And there's evidence that, that we're, we're not the same. We should be equal, but we're not the same. And that is like, I define myself definitely as a feminist. And my husband does as well. He's sort of like, I'm, I'm a real feminist. <laughs> and that's awesome. But that means like, we accept our, our differences as well. Right. You know? And I think we have the same say at the table. It right. doesn't mean that one is higher and one is lower. Right. And that is, yeah. Wow, we covered a lot of things. I know. And I think that's important. That's important because, but I do honor and um, as far as like exactly how you're saying it in, in a feminist, because that can go to extremes, you know, and, but I think that women have definite certain, just because of our physical bodies you know we've got things that we're just not as good at and that is okay <laughs> you know I think it's okay to accept exactly what our strengths and and weaknesses kind of are for both sexes doesn't make one better than the other no it doesn't like being a mother comes very natural to me but while Dennis is an author father, but he has to think sometimes about how he handles things, you know? Well, for me, that, that this is very natural. Yeah. For me, it's like my body is made for lifting heavy or whatever. So I'm really glad I have him and I can <laughs> like, can you do this for me? Yeah. Now? And that doesn't mean that he doesn't know I can do this on my own if I need to. Right. Yeah, that just means I accept my body's needs and my body doesn't like lifting heavy things. Yeah, and I'm okay <laughs> with that. I'm yes. okay with that. <laughs> exactly. I'm fine letting him do his thing and then letting him feel manly and yeah. strong. You know, all of that kind of stuff. He's in there as well. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that too. <laughs> oh. Wow, we have covered a lot. And you've given like great tips in here. Usually I ask for something specific. Okay, so you, but you've shared that you practice a meditation every morning and that's how you set your day. Um, do you, what do you suggest maybe? Um, meditation or maybe anything else that is like a favorite go-to kind of thing just to reconnect and present that's for easy for me, people to do for me it's always nature and i don't yeah. care like self self-care or self-love doesn't mean for me that i need to be alone mm. so that can be with my boys as well just taking them by the hand and going on the morning walk into the hills here and look at the cows and stuff like that you know being with little children is an awesome thing to get really present in the moment not with your mobile in your hand but actually being with them <laughs> right looking where they are looking seeing try to see the world through the eyes of a small mm. child and you will learn to be in the present moment very fast <laughs> yeah that's a good tip yeah the meditation is for me kind of part of my day because it it, it is the same as taking a shower for my physical body so the meditation is my shower for my mind. Mm. And I don't want to go out there and have be stinky, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> just <mind>. easy <laughs> that. But it, it is an other form of, of hygiene for me and to do my meditation. But it's also a great thing to get centered, get balanced. And um, the other thing is that get really clear on what you want from your life. Mm. 
get really, really specific, get really, really clear what you want to have in your life, what makes you happy, and then go and get it. Get moving, get yeah. changing, get really clear and start with the B. I do like regularly, I write B, do, have lists. So I like the first column is B, the second column is have, and the third column is do. And I sit down and I get very specific. What, who do I want to be? How do I want to be? You know, I want to be kind, support, supportive, loving, uh, patient, all of this kind of stuff. Then what do I want to do? Which experience do I want to have in, in the next year, in the next three years? I want to scuba dive. I want to have a soul retreat in Bali. I want to, you know, build a house and build a, build a, build a home base for, mm-hmm. for my family. And then what do I want to have? And there is like, I have certain shoes I'm drooling over for like three years now. <laughs> And they're handmade Australian boots and they're very expensive. This is something I really, really want. Now, I want a daughter. Mm. I want another child and I want a daughter to raise because I think, yes, I can teach my boys a lot, but their main role model is their father. Mm -hmm. And I have so much to give. Mm. I want a daughter that I can hand my knowledge on. You know, these are just like... I know the boots and the daughter, they're on two sides of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> but these are things that come onto my list. And yeah. just because you write the list doesn't mean that this is set in stone. This can change over time because right. we're changing all the time. Yeah. We're transforming all the time. This list will change. Yeah. But this, over time, you will get more and more clear and more and more specific. The more you do it, do it daily, do it weekly, whatever you feel comfortable with, but get very specific on what you want and then start with the B. Because this is the thing that you can change in this moment right now. Mm. You can choose to be loving, to be supportive, to be kind, to be helpful, to be patient, to all these things fit. You can, you can start today. You can start today on getting fit. You can start today on eating healthy. You can start today by going out and handing, handing out fruit. By being more kind, you know, by being helpful, by giving back to the community. Whatever it is that you want to be, the do and the have, they come. And when you're clear on them, you focus on them and you, you can then work towards them, you know. I but you have that. to start with the B and then you, you radiate that energy and send out the, the message to the universe. Look, I have my list and I'm starting here. I'm doing my work. Can you bring me, bring me the rest of it? <laughs> <laughs> I want those boots. <laughs> yeah, I want those boots. Yeah. Yes. And I will get them. <laughs> At some point, they will be my present to myself yeah. that I come this far, you know? Yeah. There is no question if I will have them. It's just a question of when. Yeah. <laughs> I really, really like that list idea and, and how to focus on the B part first. Do. Because you're and, right, that's something you can do now. And for that, you also have to get still. There comes the intuition again. What do I really want? Mm-hmm. What is it that I really want? And then you get still and you listen to yourself, to your body, to the, the feelings you get when you think about different things. And so, yeah, it, yeah. It, that is how I came up with the whole, like, I want to go back to the Philippines. So, like, closing the, the, the circle, we're going back next March. We're going back to the Philippines for three months. Wow. That's the plan. We're saving up right now. I have the flights. I know how much they will cost us. I have the, the resort that we were beforehand in 2011. We will go back there. I was in contact with the resort manager. She has booked us in. It's all planned, you know. <laughs> and of course, there's a big step, especially with the smallies. Yeah. Um, that's why we're going three months and not three weeks. But also on the Philippines, they don't have any word for depression or sadness. They have, they're so poor. There's so much poverty around, but they're so happy. They're so content. And I want to learn more. I want to learn more about that culture. 
I want to learn more about what makes them so happy. Mm. And also I want to go back to my happy place and yeah. show my children where they're born, where, where I was with my mind when they were born. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. And there it comes back all to the happy place. And that is why the happy place birthing, that is why the happy place living, it is, it always comes back to this place that is probably just in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody yes. creates it in their own. Yes, yeah, yeah, for everybody it's different. For some it's a, somebody it's tree house, for somebody it, yes, it is um, on a mountain. <laughs> or a tree house a, in the mountains. Yeah, a tree house in the mountains. Close to the or, beach, too. Yeah. You know, I've got to have the water. <laughs> <laughs> or it, it's a little hot on an island or whatever. And like with the visualizations and meditations I um, developed for the, for the pregnancy program, you were actually able to find your own happy place and then train to go there and then at the end of it i'm still waiting for the first happy place baby to be born so for the happy the first happy place birthday oh. <laughs> but like she's due in august and i'm oh, super excited it's right around the corner but like with, with the visualizations you're actually like you go into that contraction and when it's over you go into your happy place and you relax there, you really recharge, and then you come back out of it and you're ready for the next contraction. Because birthing is one thing, but being in the present moment is the best thing you can do. Mm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> because then you don't think like, oh my God, I have 12 hours more of this, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's probably what I would have thought. I mean, I had two children, but they were both C-sections. So mm -hmm. I had, I didn't have to go through it. I was okay with that, to be honest with you. I, I kind of set that intention, oddly enough, when I found out I was pregnant, because I didn't like the not knowing and the not having a plan of when I might go into labor. And then my daughter ended up breach. So yeah. I was like, it's perfect. This is exactly what I want. <laughs> It's gonna hurt. I think we're so trained from <laughs> from the outside, you know, from movies and from from books and all of that. Oh yeah, my mother died at my birth. You know that that oh, movie scene right. where they roll the the woman lying on on her back screaming. Yeah, yeah. We're so trained to be so afraid of birthing, but actually, when you go through that through that transition to go through that, like. It, it's just amazing. I had the most amazing experience birthing my babies. And I was so empowered afterwards. And every time I look at them, I remember how strong I am and how it, it empowered me so much. And I think, right, that, that, that thought of, of like, I don't want to go through it. I don't want to have the uncertainty. You can't plan and all of that kind of stuff. If you work on your mindset and get into a positive mindset, you can have such an amazing experience mm. and you can go out there stronger and really having that event of of going from woman to a mother celebrated because for me those two pregnancies and two, those two birth experiences they were the biggest transformation i had in my life mm. definitely yes yeah <laughs> so awesome <laughs> So great to find out more about you too. Oh, thank you. Not just in, you know, the online world where we're a little picture, you know, a little inanimate picture sitting there. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm training on sharing my story. Yeah. Like, you have I, a wonderful story. Yeah. yeah I need to share more of this because it gives so many people hope. If you're in that, in that, in that situation that you're depressed, that you have anxiety, that you have fear, that you're stuck in a clinic, pumped with drugs, you know, to keep you numb and quiet. I want you to know this is not all that has life for you. Yeah. This is my message and I need to share it more and I need to be louder and spread the word and be more there. So, yes. Yeah. And you're giving me a platform and I'm so happy about it. Wow. I'm, I'm so happy to be here because that's a, a beautiful message and you're so calm. Like, I feel like I just, 
did a whole meditation for the past hour, kind of. <laughs> your voice is so calming, and and I feel like sometimes I'm so blah blah like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you also because so people can get a more personal taste of oh, yes. how you work. Share your offer. So my offer is at the moment I'm offering uh, sixty minutes with me for a happy place session. So for free. Uh, so you can just book like Cherise will have a little link for you and yeah. you can book your happy place session there if you want to work with me. And we can line out, we can get your vision clear of your happy place. We can line out what areas you can change right now. And I can also feel and see where you are right now. If you need a little meditation with me, if you need work on yourself a lot, if you need strategies and tips and like structure in a certain part of your life or also if you're trying to get your business on from you know up and running and you need a little bit of tips and tricks there i'm i'm all up for it so this is my offer get 16 minutes free with me uh, and talk to me and, so and generous. Let, me, let me see where you are because this is what i want to do i want people to help to get to their happy place yeah I want people to move towards a happier life and I want to be there and be the one helping them and like maybe just having that one sentence that shifts their minds to a place where they can say like, I can do this. Yeah. I can do this. Yes. I, I, I am actually, I am as strong as this woman in front of me because we all have that inside us. We just need to access it. Yeah. That's my offer. Book your session with me. Call yeah. that. Yeah. We get onto Skype or Zoom, and then yeah. we'll talk for an hour. Do let's let's do it. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. So. <laughs> I know you're the next one. I am. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, so the, yes, this information is on my website at shereesboucher.com slash the Inspire View series, and there's a little quick link at the top that will take you right down to. Um, this interview and the little bio and a link to the offer and contact information, all that good stuff for you. And it's also on my YouTube channel, but you don't get the links and all that stuff there. You have to actually just, you know, click over to shoulderbouche.com to actually get that stuff. <laughs> so thank you. Gosh, thank you so much. We covered like a million things. Oh, yes. I feel very calm just from talking to you. <laughs> and I, I am so happy that you shared your story with us because it's very inspiring because I could just get a, a very clear image of where you were and where you are. And that is amazing, amazing transformation. And your ability to share that now with other people is, ooh, it's just so exciting. And it's, it's fantastic and it's generous and I think that you've got um, so much to share and your gifts are very, very needed. Yes. So I hope, every, I hope everybody connects with you and works with you I so further, further, works do. with you further <laughs> because um, I can see big transformations for people with this process. I really like it. I can see them too. I have yeah. a vision, you know, of a network of people around the globe, just like being aware of this very simple process to stay in your transformation and actually enjoy it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And especially when times, you know, are like, are, cause we all have them, you know, it's not like we're in a happy place all the time, but to know that there are tools that you can use to, to bring yourself back and manage that is so, so important yes yeah. well thank you so much and everybody um please do go to my website shereesboucher.com slash the inspire view series to get the link for her super generous offer and to watch other interviews and take advantage of their offers too thank you for being here and sharing thank you so much for having me so grateful i love and like to you yeah. <laughs>